So there's a lot of excitement about blockchain right now. And what's great about blockchain is that it has separated data integrity from data security, meaning you don't have to keep data locked up behind a wall. You can, you can actually spread it among many people and they can't tamper with it. And you can operate different types of agreements, systems, smart contracts, applications in that space and make sure that everybody's following the rules. A lot of people have started to see how this might be able to shift some of the dynamics, in particular power dynamics in our systems, where, for example, for a currency, it, you could technically have currencies that we all could participate in and issue rather than that being something central to bankers or governments. And um, also for software, things like Facebook or Twitter, you know, like we actually could just run these things peer to peer and not have a company in the middle spying on us, choosing for us, deciding what we see, what we don't. Blockchain is a hash chain of blocks of transactions and all of the nodes that are participating in it have to synchronize one chain. They have to end up with one global ledger, which means essentially everybody has to do all of the work. So there's a fundamental scalability problem. It doesn't actually get more efficient as you add more nodes, it gets less efficient. Holochain is probably better thought of as like Git, which is a, a version management tool that organizes your things into a, a hash, but every developer is running their own copy of the repository. In, in Holochain, every node has its own chain, its own source chain, and all of the changes that it contributes to the system are signed to its chain and then shared to a sort of distributed GitHub, if you will. It's a, but it's a DHT, which is the technology that BitTorrent uses, for example. And so this isn't a, a, a new technology. No, none of the parts of this is new. It's the combination that is. And in part, what makes the DHT so different is that it's a validating DHT. It's sharded as well, which we've been sharding DHTs for a while. People have been trying to shard blockchains and haven't really figured out a good way to do that yet, but there's a lot of people very hopeful about that direction. So you can shard it, break it into pieces, and then the nodes that end up with the data, having to store this piece of data, actually validate that data. They request, they, they validate it against the source chains who published it. So they make sure it was signed to that person's chain and that it followed the rules in producing it. So for example, if, if it's a currency that you had the credits you were spending. When people know blockchain, if they really understand the technology, they sometimes have a hard time kind of inverting the thinking because you're doing the signed chain part at the edges instead of at the center. And the center is an eventually consistent, monotonic, distributed hash table. The structure is different, so it's not about having a distributed ledger that everybody is connecting to. It's about having individual source chains that are validated against each other and checked against their neighbors. So there's a sufficiency rather than everybody having to get on. Um, and that's what makes it scalable because as it gets bigger, it only gets more and more resilient and more efficient.